So hello everyone, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Pedro Alves, I work at Red Hat uh, on the debug team. I focus most of my engineering time in GDB. And I'm here to show you uh, some work I've done in the last year. Um, so, uh, I didn't really know what to present. <laughs> then I asked around what people would be interested in and uh, this topic came up, uh, suggested by Simon. Uh, so if this uh, doesn't work very well, uh, you can blame him. <laughs> All right, uh, so the topic is um, tab completion, command options, uh, some changes inside GDB's internals that were meant to improve usability. Um, all right. So I'm going to be talking about tab completion, uh, how things were, how things can be now and are now in some uh, places, in some commands that have been already converted. Um, and then I'm going to be talking about command options. And here I'm not talking about the options you pass to GDB on, on the shell command line. I'm talking about GDB's own commands. Um, all right, tab completion. Um, some little bit of terminology uh, so we can make, have, make some sense of what I'm talking about next. Um, when you press tab in GDB uh, using the print command, for example, uh, and you, you press tab while you're typing var, uh, as over there, uh, GDB will try to do some completion and it will present you some completion matches, so the things that it can, uh, that it knows would be po potential uh, things you might be interested in. Those are the completion matches. Um, if you look at uh, where the, the, uh, the, the second line, where the expanded to variable, uh, the, f the V, it's the, the location where uh, GDB told read line uh, where to expand the completions. Uh, and that point is called the word break point. Um, the thing where it's written LCD, that, that stands for lowest common denominator. That's terminology that came from read lines internals. Um, it means it's, it's the, subs, uh, the common prefix between all the completion matches. Uh, and that's what read line uh, expands the, the var to. Uh, the two uh, potential completion matches, uh, they are ambiguous starting at the number. And the common prefix, it's the LCD. All right. Um, uh, the, the, the point where the, uh, the, the word breakpoint is uh, depends on the kind of command you're typing. Uh, if you're typing an expression, then um, something parses the input string and uh, splits it in some kind of tokens. doesn't really happen that way, but finds the last token, and that's the one you're completing. How to break that input string in tokens depends on the command. Um, if you're parsing an expression, then it's going to be the string is going to be broken on spaces, on, on the plus sign, on columns, the dots, and a bunch of other characters. If you're completing a file name, then it's going to be split on a, a smaller subset of, of characters. Like, for example, look at the dot. Uh, if you complete an expression, then you then s.foo, those are two tokens. Uh, but if you're completing a file name, the file.c, and you press tab, you don't want to complete just the c. It's, you want to complete it on the file.c name of the file. How does this work uh, internally inside GDB? Um, so GDB uses read line, new read line. Uh, and there are two phases uh, in, in the completion process. There's like pass one and pass two. Uh, and pass one, we call it inside GDB, the handle break chart pass. And the second pa pass is the handle completions. And the first pass is Redline asking GDB, give me the set of characters, uh, which are the characters where I'll be splitting the input string to find the boundaries for the tokens. So I, I need to find the last token. Um, and by default, it's that, that's the, 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 the set of characters. And the default is like the, the characters for the C language. Um, and any command can override that set. Uh, by calling that function set command completer handle break charts. That's where the name comes from, is the name of the pass. 
um, GDB hands that over to, to read line and breaks the word apart, the, sorry, the string apart, finds the word break point, and then calls GDB again. It's a different callback, but inside GDB it ha ends up ending at the same place, more or less, uh, and the same place with a different argument saying it's now phase two. And there's one extra argument, which is the word point. It's a pointer to, into the string uh, where you're starting the completion. And then GDB continues or goes back to parsing the string from the, from the beginning. Um, let me see the pointer, yeah. So goes back and parses the string again to figure out which command is being completed, and then looks at the command, so it knows it's print, and then finds the completer callback that's associated with that, because each command can have its own way of completing the arguments, and calls that callback, and passes the word breakpoint location that he had, that had found in phase one. GDB then finds whatever com completion matches uh, are interesting and returns that to read line. Read line then prints the thing on, on the screen and uh, completes the, the lowest common denominator part there, the LCD. Right, those two things, prints the completion matches and expands the LCD. This is just, uh, uh, that's one of the read line hooks, that's the, the hook for the, for the phase one. Uh, this is an okay process, works okay if your commands only handle one kind of argument. Like you print in only expressions, then you're going to break the string always the same way. And if it's the file command, it's always file names. You just associate the way to break the string with the command. But what if you have a command and your arguments are going to be uh, no, not the same kind you may have options like the break command, break source, and then file. File is going to be a file name. And then function is going to be a symbol name. The, the set of characters used to find the word location are going to be different. It's going to be dynamic. So this approach of two passes doesn't work correctly. Um, up until 8.1, what happened was we had a, the symbol complete, completer was associated with the break command. And you press tab, and even if you're trying to complete a file name, it didn't work correctly. Uh, and also, you know, there's the sorry, the minus character. Obviously, for the options, it's going to be a word break character for simple names, but not for file names. Uh, so, solution to fix that and, and improve tab completion um, is just kind of obvious, right? You're pars parsing the string multiple times, figure out different things, and, and you have to parse the string in order to process the command. I've been talking about completion, but that is also actually executing the command, and obviously that needs to parse the, the string. And we used to have, and still have in many cases, two different parsers, one for top completion and one for actually running the thing. Doesn't make sense, why not unify it? That's, that's what we're talking about. This was around 8.1, uh, and this led to a completely new line spec completer. Uh, old one was dumped, and the new one is the actual line spec completer with some a special flag mode. I'm in completion mode, so some things will be different, but most of the code is going to be the same. Uh, and led to a new improved explicit location completer also, and that allowed getting rid of, of need for quoting in line specs and explicit locations. Actually, it didn't need quoting for actually running the command, but it needed quoting for tab completion, uh, which is silly because tab completion is the thing you're typing most of the time and type pressing tab, and then GDB completes wrong things, uh, and you get frustrated. Uh, but now it's um, the behavior is the same for tab completion or, or running the command. Uh, it made the break command more um, dynamic and uh, smart. Um, you do break foo, foo is a function name, you press tab, and GDB now knows that after the function name, can only, you can only type if, task, or thread. So that's what it gives you as, an, as options for completion. And if you type if, space, and tab, now knows, GB knows that after if, there can only be an expression. So now it engages expression completion mode. Okay. Um, 
I can just quickly show you. Um, this is me debugging GDB. It's basically only the program I debug all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so break main, and if I type uh, if, now it's showing me uh, maybe bad example. Uh, now it's expecting expressions. No. <laughs> I uh, didn't prepare a right example, but that works. Let's not waste time on that. I have plenty of slides. <laughs> if you know me, I'm always overslided. <laughs> All right. Uh, so how this, does this work internally? Um, there's only one pass now. And it's not the third pass. It's the, the pass one from the old method now does everything. Um, there's this object called the completion tracker. It, it's responsible for aggregating the list of completions, and it tracks whether you're over the max completion limit. If you press tab and the thing completes to 1,000 symbols, it's not useful. It goes over limit, and GB says, oh, too many. Type more characters. And keeps track of the custom word point to hand over to readline. This is very important. Uh, when you're converting commands to use this mechanism, this is the thing you, you need to pay attention to. Uh, as, as you're parsing the string, you're advancing, you're advancing the pointer to the input string where uh, readline is supposed to start completion in that word point that I mentioned in the beginning. And custom here means it's GDB that's computing it, not readline. Um, the object keeps also track of the least common denominator, and this is necessary because of the while matching support in C++ that was also added in 8.1. Um, that's about setting a breakpoint and that breakpoint being set in the function in all, all kinds of namespaces. So you do break fun function and it will set a breakpoint in function, A colon colon function and B colon colon function. And notice that the, you, we have th three completion matches and we have an LCD that is not the common prefix of all, all the three strings. It expanded the function, but the common prefix is the empty string. One starts with F, the other starts with A, and the other with B. And the LCD is being computed, computed on the function part. And this object takes care of that as well. Uh, I mentioned everything is handled in one pass. It's called the handle break shards pass. And if uh, now I'm going to show you a little bit of GDB code. Um, I guess if you're not into GDB internals, you're going to be bored to death. And if you are used to GDB internals, you may be bored to sleep. <laughs> All right, so just show you quickly how you would convert a command. I, I kind of like hope some people in the room might feel motivated to go and convert something. Uh, maybe they thought it would be too complicated, but it's not. Um, you take some command and you just get rid of the word breakpoint parameter because you're going to compute it yourself. And you install a set command completer handle break shards callback. That's a phase one callback. Um, it's rare that the command in GDB calls that in the old ways, but for the new ways, every command will call that. Maybe we'll change the name at some point. Um, and then you have to enable single pass mode by enabling the custom word point tracking. Uh, and that's just a call in the tracker, set use custom word point true. And so the, the function will start First thing we will do will be enable the uh, new mode, and then we'll continue parsing the input string as if you're actually parsing the arguments. And as you're doing that, you're finding the, uh, the next token or the end of the token and advancing the, the word point, uh, custom word point in the tracker. And um, as soon as you, end, as you reach the end of the string, just going to append whatever completion match. Uh, to the tracker, the tracker, the list of matches. Uh, here I'm showing a little bit of the line spec completer where it's uh, appending the completions for the for labels. <coughs> there are some details in, over there, like uh, there's some handling for quoting, there's some handling for if you want to append a white space or not at the end. Um, can find those details by looking at the code, just showing you they exist. That's pretty much it. That's all you have to do to use a new mode. 
It just enables you to have a dynamic way to um, build completions. Time. Oh man. Yeah, when I tried this back home, I took one hour and a half. <laughs> I'm going very fast. Yeah, go ahead. Back when you're, you had the example, you're breaking on, you're completing a function name, and it's in different namespaces. Uh, yeah. Um, Where is that? Uh, is that something that's specific to uh, the completer only does that because of wild matching, and it's some special thing to wild matching, or is that somehow? So it, it's uh, not sure exactly. OK, let me explain. So the, the completion tracker has this function. I showed it here. The app completion function. Yeah. Here I'm passing one argument. Has an, another argument. It's op, it's optional, and the, the second argument is you know, the subset of the symbol name you found. What what is the subset that counts for LCD computation? Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions on tab completion? So you said right now, I guess there's the old method that's still uh, in there, and the new method, and, and basically every every implementation of each command can be switched one by one to the new method. Correct. So, uh, do you know about how many commands there are and how many uh, have been switched? I never counted that. <coughs> I, I kind of like ha have the sense like we have a thousand commands, but once I counted, it wasn't that many. <laughs> it's like a few dozen. Uh, I was surprised, um, but I, I don't know. I don't have an estimate of that. Uh, I think when we get to options, you will see uh, that I think in the end we'll have most uh, options converted because converting to the new options framework implies that change as well. So as soon as you want an option and use the new framework, you're going to do this. And you've you said you converted break. Uh, so you converted a, f a specific subset of commands, or say all that 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 use, for example, line spec. Uh, all that we use line spec. So it's break and li and list. Okay. Are there any more? That's, I don't know. That's expressions. Two expressions. No. Is it list? I always confuse that. I actually don't remember. <laughs> I changed it, but I don't remember for what the line spec. Yeah. Anyway. Just helping you extend this to the hour and a half that you envisaged. Um, <laughs> the history of how you ended up with two parsers. Uh -huh. Can you talk a little bit about that? Was there some particular reason why it came out? Or was it accident? That maybe before I was born, it was just <laughs> like that when I got into GDB. Ask our OMS. Yeah, it's. It's just the way we're that we're, it, it has to do with the way readline works, I guess. Readline has that call, that hook. This one. So, if you never looked at readline, readline is very uh, has a bunch of globals and a bunch of uh, function pointer hooks. <laughs> if you want to customize your readline experience, you install this hook or you enable that mode, all of that. Um, but I think this is the normal way to use readline. It uh, it comes from Bash, and it assumes that the, the the language the tool exposes is like uniform, the syntax is uniform. Uh, so it's e it's going to be easy to find a way to break the input string using some su some set of characters. So I'm I'm parsing a shell script, and it's always going to be around, around quotes or around spaces, things like that thing for GDB is that it's an um, interactive tool and a, a single set of characters does not work unless you want to have people quoting all the time. So you, if you do break function open parentheses int close parentheses because you care about that overload, that works without quoting. And, uh, but if you have a, uh, um, 
uh, a fixed set of characters to break your input string, you would be breaking it on this on between the the name of the function and the open parentheses, which is not what you want. Unless people quoted the string, which was how GGB worked several releases ago. I think he fixed that. No? Yeah, thank you. Make sense? Uh, okay, so, yeah, so, so this, this work uh, kind of happens because I was working on, on, li on, wild, on wild matching and then I wanted to make, you know, I was, type completion doesn't work, I'm frustrated with this and I ended up fixing that. Uh, and the same thing happened with the options uh, framework. Um, so, um, before GDB option or currently in GDB, uh, things are messy. Uh, each command implements its own way of parsing the, the arguments, uh, the options to the zoo command. Uh, some commands will, will use string comp, string and comp. Uh, some commands will use some custom functions we have in there, extract arg. Uh, some commands will use uh, build argv, which is, breaks the, the string into an array of strings, like an argv. <laughs> Same kind of thing you pass to exec or thing you get when, when main is called. Um, none of this is ideal. The first one is uh, obviously going to cause disparities between commands. It's too low level. One command will do this and and uh, support the abbreviation of options. The other one will forget to do that. Um, argv uh, only works if your input string uh, again, is normalized. If you want to parse an expression, then build argv is not going to work because it's going to break the expression around uh, white space and you lose the original uh, thing. Uh, I noticed something odd with build argv is that it treats single quote and double quote the same, it's, uh, different from what you expect on a, on a shell. I'll talk, I have a slide about that later. Um, so some commands support op option abbreviation. Uh, the explicit locations case it, it is an obvious one. Um, you can do L or LI or LLIN. It's all the same. Uh, some commands and I guess most commands do not support abbreviation. Uh, that example is a, a recent one I ran into in the multi-target work I just posted last week. I added a new option called no connection, so long string, and you cannot abbreviate that, um, which is uh, not comfortable to type. Uh, some support, uh, partially support uh, abbreviation like the watch location. You can either type the whole thing location or just L. You cannot type LO, it doesn't work, it fails. And rarely, commands support tab completing the, the command options. Uh, so you do break, the break case is, is works really nicely, uh, not with the option framework, <coughs> but it does support tab completing the, the command options, like, uh, like this. So I press tab and it shows me the potential options I have. Uh, but add inferior to not. Nothing. Um, so I wanted to fix this. Um, I came up with something. This was maybe two years ago or something. It's one of those projects that you do something and forget about it. Um, there's a new way to define options for commands. It's uh, table based. A declarative form of defining options. It's just C++ arrays of options. Uh, but it's declarative. You don't call functions. Um, the option processing itself, the parsing, is taken care of by common code. And this is important because it means that all commands that use the framework will parse options the same way. Think about get opt, but not get opt. Uh, <laughs> so get opt would give you a different syntax, not GDB-ish like. Uh, GDB uses 
single single dash, even for long options, uh, supports those abbreviations with single uh, dash. And importantly, I wanted this integrated with type completion. Um, okay, so having this, uh, I think having type completion is very important because it improves discoverability of the tool. So one common thing that people complain about GDB is not easy to use. It's I uh, have to. Uh, there's a steep learning curve, uh, odd commands, things like that. And I think having tab completion show you the potential options of your command improves things because now you discover, you know, hey, I, uh, I do backtrace. Oh, there's a past main option. What does it do? Oh, I, I just learned that you can backtrace past main without having to read the manual. Um, um, this framework is also integrated with the online help machinery, GDB. Uh, it's, since it's, it's declarative, remember, you're going to define the options you support using an array of things. And why not make the help content be generated from that array as well? Um, so that's what it does. So a uh, small um, sidestep. How I got into this is we were discussing internally at Red Hat something about arrays with static fields of objects that have static fields. And a, a static field in a C++ class is a global. But when GDB prints an array of those objects, it's going to print the same global for all elements. It's kind of silly. That's how it is. And I guess someone found it silly at some point and decided to add a command to disable that. But it's still an option, and the default is on. Um, we were thinking, mm, maybe we should, should make this the default to be off, because it's kind of odd. Who would want this? <laughs> right? If you want to print a global, just print it. Um, but it's kind of hard to change things in GDB, change defaults, because maybe some people want that that way for some reason. Uh, and I guess if you won't really want to have it off, it just put it in GDB in it, and you're done. And you think, I have so many things to debate upstream. I'm not going to <laughs> debate changing a default. <laughs> but wait a minute. Um, the thing is, it's only a, a nuisance because it's very hard to use it. It's cumbersome to, to override the setting. You have to set it off, use the command you want, and then set it back on. Right? If you want, only want to use it temporarily. If, if there was an easy way to do this, then defaults that didn't matter that much. It would still matter, but not that much. So thinking about it, I thought, well, maybe we should just convert some of these, these things that frequently we discuss about changing defaults or things that we routinely use and make them be options to the print command. That's where it came from. Um, and uh, thinking on how to do this, and I got to you know tab completion and all of that. Uh, and it was an interesting pick because I think print is one of the most complicated commands you could pick to adapt. Um, it touches different aspects you have to, to decide. Um, all right, but this all works and it's all in master. Uh, it's not in any release. It's going to be in GDB nine. Uh, Uh, so, for example, here I'm debugging GDB again. Uh, I'm going to print the args array, which is this thing over here. Uh, let me put it this way. Bigger, I guess. And if you want to print it in a pretty form, you can just do this, right? Uh, with an option. Instead of having to do set print pretty on and then print, and then off again. You know, you get it. All right, so internally, a little bit of code again, so we can all go back to sleep. <laughs> There's a central <laughs> type <laughs> to define an option. It's the option def, option definition. Uh, and this is uh, inside, it's a union. It represents all kinds of different kinds of, of all different kinds of options. String options, integer options, enumerations, 
all of that. It's similar to the way commands are implemented. There's a union there. Yes, I know, unions are ugly. Uh, there's a reason for that. One, one reason is that I want to, or I think it's ideal, that we share code with the, the command implementations. The other is convenience uh, in order to be able to write these arrays in a convenient form. Um, because you can only have arrays of things in C++ if all the objects are the same type. But I'm using a trick. Uh, you don't actually use option def directly. You use a, another type that inherits option def. It does not add any da data field to the, to the object, only constructors. So it's a convenient way to create, a, a, for example, a, a Boolean option. You use Boolean option def, it has the right constructor, and it initializes the fields of the option def in the right way for a Boolean option. They have a number of those for different kinds of, of options. Notice these enumerations are the same enumerations used for the commands, UDB commands. Few types have never been converted to options just because there's no option using them right now. Alongside these option definitions, there's the actual data associated with the options. And this is a structure that already existed before all of this. So the value print options, it holds the options for the set print something commands. And a pointer to, this, to, to an instance of this is passed around all, all over the, the print command. And the idea here was, well, let's, let's reuse that. Let's use the same data structures for commands also for the options. So we have the option definitions and the pointer to one of these guys. It, the data is not held inside the options. Then you write the options like this. It's an, an array. It's uh, lots of characters I know. Looks better on your screen, I promise. Um, here you see, if you, if you kind of squint, <laughs> you see two options. There's the elements options over, over the top and the, the print options. And here I'm just showing you as an here you define a uinteger option, here you define a boolean option. Uh, then you associate with the option uh, help strings, and th this is a callback, this is a lambda, a callback that returns the field in the structure that holds the right data for the elements option. Same thing for this guy, and same thing for the other 20 elements in this array. Uh, so now you have this, and you need to glue the option definitions with the context structure. This structure here, here, you need to have one instance of this guy and one instance of this guy and glue together. So the option definitions consumes the, the context. And you write a small function just to bind them together. Uh, you're basically going to copy paste this whenever you, you create a new command and change the name and change the types and it's always going to, there's a pattern here. Uh, this is an array actually here because some commands don't mind very much details but to just show you that uh, you can return a set of context pointers because some commands are composed of sets of options like the backtrace commands has some snippets of set backtrace something options and set print something options so little bits of here little bits of there you glue them together with this Again, don't mind that very much. Uh, and <coughs> then to actually convert the command to use the framework is you just dump all the option processing you had before, just throw it in the garbage, right? You've converted it to this form. And you write something like this, very similar. Uh, we have this in maybe 10 places in GDB right now, and it's always the same. You just allocate one of the contexts uh, types, bind them to the option definitions using that function I mentioned before, that small function here. Right? So you, you bound this data context thing with the option definitions. It returns you this thing. And then you call the process options function, which is the thing that parses the input string. And at the end of this, you'll have uh, data inside this structure, corresponding to the options that were just parsed and an advanced arguments pointer that holds the rest of the input string up to the options. This is for the actual print command, right? 
And then there's the tap completion part. Remember um, the handle break shards phase and all of that? Okay. This is one callback for that. Right? And it's going to be very similar. Not exactly the same, but very similar. Um, you're going to bind a context pointer to the option definitions. For tap completion, you usually don't need a context pointer. Just pass null. And then instead of calling process options, you just call complete options. Just passes the tracker because it's tap completing. And once you've processed the options, if the option, if the user typed um, set print minus el and press tab, it's going to complete elements. And that's it. The work is done. You've, you already have the completion, so it returns true and goes back. If the user type, typed just backtrace and tab, there were no options. And, or if, even if the user typed backtrace, pass main, space, tab, you're past all the options. There's nothing else to complete in terms of options. So you continue completing on the argument after the options. Right? We call, or I call that the operand of the command. It's terminology coming from getops. Um, and um, going back to the tab completion thing, two passes, right? And I mentioned when you're using the options framework, you're automatically using the mode that only has one pass. And you don't see here anything enabling that mode, for you, but it's done for you. It's as soon as you call complete options. Internally, the first thing it does is calls use custom version of, of, of tracking the, the word point. Uh, I just found it more convenient to do this automatically because there's never going to be a, a, a case where you would not want the single pass mode for this. It wouldn't work properly. Uh, okay, so you're passing the operands, and you would do the same thing as as the pass one and pass two before, but you do it here locally uh, in a single single pass uh, mode. Because notice here you're breaking apart options on the dashes, on spaces, and depending on the kind of option, different way to skip ahead. And now you're parsing the rest of the input string uh, as an expression in this case. Uh, so it's dynamic in that way. And so you have to emulate the old pass one plus plus two, which means advance the, the work point up until the last token of the expression, and then complete that as a symbol. That's what we're doing here. Uh, it's basically what readline would do, integrated with GDB, but do it, do done all on the GDB side. There's parts of the parts of code of this function are actually borrowed from readline. Not that much. And I mentioned before, you can generate a help string from, from this. And this is how you have another function to call called build help. You pass it the old string you have to describe the command. And where you have the options described one by one, you strip it out, replace that with this template thing, uh, percent options percent. And the return is a new string with that expanded. Pretty simple. And of course, you pass it the option definitions here that you generate the same way as before. In the normal command, in the com tab completion, in the helper generation, you always use this function to bind things, uh, option definitions to contexts. Uh, all right. Um, anyone asleep yet? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, if you you might have noticed uh, somewhere along the lines, yeah. So. This thing here that you pass to process options when you're parsing the commands, this is an, an enumeration that um, tweaks the mode of argument processing. There are three different modes, and they just emulate the way that GDB always worked. So you can convert some command to this new framework without changing the behavior. Um, I, I found out there are three classes of command. Um, Uh, so let, let's start with this one. Uh, unknown is error means if you, if you want your uh, command to reject any kind of unknown argument and uh, option, sorry, say backtrace minus foo, enter, error. I don't know what foo is. If you want that, then 
you use this mode. If your command is going to accept options, and then after the options, maybe there's something that's like an expression that can also accept the minus sign. You don't want anything that looks like minus and something unknown to throw an error. You just want it to process the argument, arguments as, as soon as you find something that you don't know what it is, just stop and I'll handle the rest. That's the unknown is operand. And then there's the one required limiter. This is the one used by the print command. And this is all about this. Uh, print for 30 years of GDP's existence did not support options. 36? Something like that. Uh, so there's a risk here that you now introduce option processing to the print command and someone is using print maybe in a script or has a variable called elements. And he's going to type print minus elements expecting to print the negative form of elements but it's now going to process as, as, a, as an option. It's going to break that script, break that usage. And I don't know how many commands we'll have in the future. Maybe in 10 years we'll have twice as many uh, options there. So there's a risk here of this command that's used by, by everyone in scripts all over the place. You're going to break that use case. Uh, so I thought it was safer to keep processing that upper line as an expression. And if you want to process it as an option, then you're required to specify the delimiter, the dash dash delimiter that's common in getopt programs. Uh, and there's precedent for this, for this because LLDB also works this way. So I can always say, but LLDB did it that way, so. <laughs> I think it's safer this way. It's annoying a little bit at first, kind of forget it. Uh, you do print minus elements and GB says, I don't know what elements is, don't know this variable, oh, forgot the delimiter. But we get to use it. Sorry? How to write portable scripts that would work with all the GDB versions that don't support double dash? And the new would do, do support? You, you just wouldn't use the options, so you wouldn't type the delimiter. So it always process as an expression. You would target the old version of GDB. I see, yeah. Oh, and if something starts with dash, I would say, uh, what if just a single dash followed by a space, what if we still treat it as a uh, minus and not as a unknown option? Yeah, like you mean like print minus like this? Minus it's elements, yeah. Like this, it's still an well, expression. For backwards compatibility. Yeah, it still works. Still as an expression, yes. Great. Go ahead, Tom. I have two questions. The first one is, does completion offer dash dash as one of the completions? Yes, okay. I think so. At right. some point it used to. Maybe it doesn't. I don't recall. No. Okay. I maybe went back and I remember going back and forward with that. Yeah, may forth. maybe for required mode particularly, that would be good. For the, okay. you know, like for the other modes, I don't know, Just but maybe for this mode it might be nice. Okay. Yeah. My other question is what about print dash dash elements? Print dash dash elements? Yeah, like that's a... It's oh. going to treat elements as a positive... Yeah, but people may use that to decrement. There you go. I knew, I knew someone <laughs> would say that. <laughs> Right. Yeah, there's no way to be 100% safe. Yeah, okay. Uh, in that case, going back to how to be compatible, you can just remove the space. And so there's, there's an escape hatch. Sure, that. okay. That works uh, for me. I, You know, I think a lot of those kind of things are... Too, being too cautious? Yeah, Okay. probably. Yeah. All right. All right. There's still time to change it. If people believe that you shouldn't have to type the minus minus thing, there's still time. GDB is not out. I'd like to take this opportunity to suggest we use emoji for everything. <laughs> <laughs> we would have to support UDF8 properly first. <laughs> uh, time. Oh. Uh, 
just just one note to to for about the compatibility compatibility thing essentially whenever you concern that uh, leading one or multiple dashes are going to be interpreted uh, in a different way with a newer version of gdb i suppose you can always uh, wrap uh, your expression into parentheses and correct that's right. Then there's, that's not yeah. going to be an option anymore. Obviously. You're right. And, it, and it's the second time I'm surprised I didn't think of that. <laughs> On the mailing list, uh, someone said that. And I was like, wow, I didn't think about it all these years. <laughs> second time. That's right. If you, wrap, if you wrap the expression in parentheses, it's always going to disam disambiguate. So if you do this, it's always going to be interpreted as a decimal. Uh, good point. Thank you for that. Save me. <laughs> all right, next thing to, to mention, uh, that's testing if all, all, all of this, uh, maybe you care about this if you're going to extend the framework. Uh, um, sorry, Peter, yeah. just a quick question since we're talking about print all the time. Um, what about these slash things, print slash x, whatever? Those yeah. are still not part of that framework. Right? It's not part of this. Okay. In, in the beginning, I, I was, when I was thinking of what syntax to support, I was, you know, Wondering, should we use get opt? Uh, that would, you know, should we use dash dash for options? Things like that. I came to the realization that it, it's not GDB issue that would change interface because many commands already use single dash. And I kind of realized that in GDB syntax, it's single dash and then long string. And you cannot, uh, like in, in get opt, you have the long, long uh, options and the short options. It's short, they call it. And you can merge multiple short options in a single dash, like if you do ls minus als, right? So als are three different options, and you just use one hyphen, right? And if you want to use long options, you have to s s specify them separately. Uh, with GDB, you have the long options, you always have to specify them separately. And the dash thing is the equivalent of the short options, right? If you do um, x command slash one slash and then multiple characters are for different options. You have that on the disassembly command. Disassembly slash m for mixed source and disassembly. And you can specify multiple characters. So it's like <laughs> damn it. <laughs> slash is for single character things and dash is for long options. That's in my mind how it works. I, then I got to think about maybe maybe Richard Stallman thought that the, the, the dash command would be a better short, a better character for the short options because it's going to be rare that expressions start with slash, unlike the dash. So that might have been the smartest on this, on this end. Yeah. Did I answer the question? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I think I have 10 minutes, or should I? 10 minutes I have? All right. Um, along the way, uh, I added some commands for exercising all of this in a test suit. And uh, one neat thing is the one beneath is I've added uh, one command for each kind of setting that GDB supports. So we have commands that are Booleans, auto Booleans, integers, u integers, all, all of these different kinds of options. And if you want to exercise something in the core command uh, machinery, the only way to do that is to take some representative command and use that one, like use, use a print command for something. Uh, uh, that's a command that takes expressions. Uh, wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong example. Uh, like a set print element, that's an u into your uh, uh, command. You would use that. But what if in the future that command changes, it's no longer u integer, it's z u integer unlimited or something. Now you're going to break that command was, that was only caring about the infrastructure. Did not really care about the print elements thing. So I added those uh, maintenance set test settings. And the only thing the command does is it does nothing, just accepts the option. And that allowed testing deeply the settings framework and test have completion with this. And this, of course, uncovered a good set of bugs that were fixed along the way. 
and inconsistencies that were fixed and addressed. And the command at the top is a similar thing, but for testing options. Uh, there's a command called test options that then has one option for each kind of option that you support. There's flag options, boolean options, integer options. So the thing is the, the command parses the string and then outputs back what it has parsed. And then in the test suite, exercises many different combinations of this, including with tab completion. And the third word in the command is, is one of those modes that I mentioned here. Somewhere, there's an enumeration. Lost it. Yeah. One of these, three. So we have three subcommands. There's maintenance, test options, require delimiter. Maintenance, test options, other mode, other mode. So we have everything covered. And that's pretty much it that I wanted to discuss about the options framework. Like a, a seek here is mentioning the with command as a follow-up to this. We were discussing on, on the list how to, how to actually do, the, do all of this. And uh, Philip Varoukia, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, he proposed a different way to have this uh, way to override globals. Uh, we discussed things. We ended up settling on this, on this variant that I, I showed you. Uh, there was one use case or two that he wanted to, to have supported that was not covered by print options. And uh, while we're discussing this, we thought, well, well, let's look at the use cases you have and focus on one of them at a time. And maybe the solution isn't something grandiose, but just focus on that. And that's where with command was born. Uh, it's just, you can think of it as a variant of the options. It's just a way to override the global setting. Uh, this is the internal help. Uh, so you do with some setting name, dash dash, and some random command. So you can do, like over there you see, with language Pascal, dash dash, print this object. It's going to do the same as doing set language Pascal, print object, and set language to what it was before. Right? Uh, so imagine if print had a minus language option, it would be the equivalent of that. But there are advantages and there are disadvantages. One advantage of the print thing, print minus option, is just less characters to type, fewer characters to type. Um, and it's auto-discoverable. You do print minus tab and it shows you, oh, there's a language option. Um, <clears throat> one advantage of with is that you can use it with user-defined scripts. You have a can sequence of commands, define my command, and blah, 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 and then you can do with language data minus minus my script. It's going to run all the commands inside the script with that setting overridden. Right? Um, and it, it, it's longer to type, but it can abbreviate it uh, very much. Uh, the line at the bottom is a nested invocation of with, so you can <laughs> you can do like with language Pascal, with print elements unlimited, print object. All right? So you can combine things. Uh, and there's an extra layer on top of that that Philip is working on. Uh, I'll let him discuss that at next problem. Uh, I think it. I think both solutions are good to have. They're alternative and complementary. And wrap user defined commands and it's integrated with tab completions. This here goes back to the tab completion part of the talk about being dynamic and handling things in a single pass. So the, the, the with command understands what it's following it. And as soon as you reach the subcommand part, now it knows what to complete. Uh, so w with print elements 100, with language ADA, print var. So here it knows it's a completing an expression. Right? You, you completed there, it was completing a number. So you're completing there, you're completing a language. So it's dynamic and adjusts. And this is maybe like 30 lines of code to implement this command. Very short. I don't understand what that means. Oh, well, if, if you can define your own command and you do it inside uh, a couple of widths, so is the implementation of the command remembering the values of the options when you execute it? Or yes. It, so it, it, is it, stores, it stores the previous value on the stack, on the local C stack. So what, like, 
Maybe not answering the same thing you're questioning. So it's not a closure of of uh, of the options. Okay. Oh yeah, no, it's not taking closure of all the options in GDB. It's just focusing on that option you're overriding, storing the current value, changing it, changing the global, running the command, and changing global back. Okay, so you cannot capture uh, the global status of the global the values of all the global options mm, no. at any given no. point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, there's a, there's a main width command as well. It's the same thing, but for main settings. And this is uh, useful, of course, for the main settings, because the width command, it's, if you replace width with set, notice it's the same syntax, right? I didn't mention that. Uh, it's set print element, so you can do width print element. It's set backtrace past main, you can do width backtrace past main. Just replace set with width. And that means you cannot use it with maintenance commands. So you have main width for that. And then the, the test suite exercises all the internal machinery of the width command and type completion around this using main width. Oh. And um, next things that uh, maybe would be interesting to, to work on, um, as I was working on the multi-target work, as I mentioned, I added a new option to add inferior, add inferior no connection. I thought, well, maybe I should, as a preparatory patch, just convert this to GDB option. I do these things and then I go deep in the <laughs> rabbit hole. Uh, we almost were there. We already support string options. Andrew added that recently. And so file name options are quite similar, except tab completion is going to be, decompl is going to be completely different because you cannot tab complete a string. It's just a random set of characters, but file names, you want to complete them. And integrating that into read line, wow. I had to learn a lot about readline and new hooks and new ways to tweak readline to do what I wanted to do. I found a way, but then as I was doing this, I realized, man, tab completion is, bro is broken in a lot of places in GDB, um, especially if you consider spaces and quoting. And of course, I ran into the bugs and I thought, I'll just fix them. It's going to be, how hard can it be? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, it's hard. <laughs> so I, at some point, I just gave up on this and uh, just used the normal mechanism we had before. Just added a new option there using stream comp. And uh, it's all packed into a Git repositor repository waiting for time to finish that off. Um, something else, uh, I did mention quoting before, that quoting in GDB that used the parts that used build arc v, the function, this, this function, uh, es escapes and processes quoting in an odd way. I don't know why it's done this way. It treats escape, um, treats single quotes and double quotes the same. So supposedly in the shell, you, I guess you all know, in single quotes, everything goes inside, right? Uh, it's not processed. It's like raw. But in GDB, no. Uh, it works the same way as, as double quotes. Um, So to fix this, I did a copy of build RV into GDB because this is a lib liberty function, and I fixed that. And only after fixing that, I, I did a grab on the source tree and a grab on GCC and realized GDB is, <laughs> there's only one use outside of GDB of this function, one single use in the whole GCC and GDB tree. It's in the LTO driver. So. I think we should be able just to fix the function without having a copy. Um. All right. Things I think would be worth it to do, uh, add support for aliases in the options framework, uh, and maybe colorize the tab completer. Remember wild matching? You do break pushback tab, it's going to expand into ni this nice set of completion matches. So the, the pushback functions in some namespaces, it's hard to visualize this on the, on the command line. Maybe if we printed the pushback part, the part that was matched in a different color would make it easier. And maybe other uses for color here. Or maybe make it smarter and have two columns and the second column show some meta, meta information to what if completed. And I'm done. I think I have 20 seconds left. Go ahead.
and we're out of time. No. Um, something that only formed as a question as you were talking about the later part, with the tab completion, have you considered that a second double tap on tab could give you a bit more documentation on what, you know, brief documentation on what the actual options are and how you might use them? That's an interesting idea. Maybe, yeah. As a decades user of GDP, the discoverability of the Discover features more, is yeah. most of the problem. All right, maybe. Uh, actually, the, the double tap, double press of tab, it's a read line thing. There's actually a switch to, to make, um, the read line has two modes. Either you have to press tab two times, you do a break funk, tab, nothing happens. You press tab again, then it shows you the completions. Maybe you didn't know this because you're just used to it, but you have to press tab twice. When you when it's um, there's a conflict, there's a there's a, there's an op in in readline to disable that, to, to say if I press tab once I want to see the options immediately, so we would enable that. I've tried it and it's more comfortable. I don't know why it's not the default. Uh, so um, and then that that would free up the second tab because otherwise we have we would have to press three times. Uh, so we're out of time and thank you again for attending and see you all. Bye, I guess.